What's up, mobile gamers? It's Drones with Gigs, and we are doing something a little bit different today. I have got a tier list out for 5v5, and I'm going to be kind of, you know, putting all the heroes into the tier list. And the first thing I want you guys to know is we're going to go off of, like, the average skill level or how other players play the heroes. We're definitely not going to go off of my skill level because all of these heroes would be in like the C tier and you guys don't want to see that. So we are going to go ahead and start it off. We're just going to go down the list and we'll start off with Aletta. So let me know what you guys think if you want more tier list videos or anything like that, because I definitely want to do them. I'm just not sure what you guys would prefer and all that kind of stuff. So sorry if the audio is messed up. I am recording on a different device in order to actually put these tier lists together and stuff like that. And we're going to start it right off with Aletta. But we're going to put her in C tier. Now, I know a lot of you guys are like, oh my God, how, how can you do that? She's so good. She's, she's the best. And I honestly think that she is outshined by a lot of the other heroes in this list, and especially with game modes that are objective-based. I think that she loses a lot of her areas where she shines and a lot of her potential is missing. And that leads us into, well, what does Drons or Gigs think is the must-pick hero of the day? And that's honestly going to be Fort. Now, if you're holding a point or trying to stay on an objective, he is the best Vanguard hero for the job. He can shoot while also having his shield down anywhere he wants. He's got a like a damage mitigation for his second ability. And he's honest, honestly just a must-pick hero. You have to have him in your squad if you're going to have a good chance of winning the game. Now, obviously, you, know, you can play Aletta at a, a very high level, and she can still you know, go up a tier or whatever, but she isn't really one of those heroes that can influence the flow of a match the same way Fort does. So another way to think about this is let's say I'm playing Fort and I switch to Aletta. Well, we're probably going to lose the match or I'm just doing it because I think I'm a funny guy and I'm going to spend the last minute of the match playing Aletta instead of Fort because we're going to win super easily. So if you switch from Aletta to Fort, on the other hand, you're absolutely going to skyrocket on the point. You're going to be pushing the payload further. I just don't think that she offers enough, especially when if you flank, you can kill an Osos or something like that. But you're going to have to go to the point in order to kill any of these Vanguard heroes. And I just don't think that she is worth picking over a lot of the other heroes on this list. So that's kind of the, the controversial pick here for this video is Aletta being in C tier. Um, I'm just not, I'm not feeling it, you know? I know a lot of you guys think she's good and she definitely is a good hero, but I think that she's outshined by everybody else on this tier list. So I'm just going to put her in C and you guys can freak out all you want. And this will come as no surprise chemist is going all the way to s she is a must pick she's the better healer of the two even with all the changes she can make it where your enemies don't heal with her second ability and she's already a broken hero in the regular game so now you can heal more people in a given area because all your teammates are going to be clustered around the objective and since the enemy is going to be trying to be clustered around the objective and stuff you can use Chemist to heal and do damage at the same time. And then it's it's just GG's. A Fort and a Chemist can hold down in control pretty much by themselves unless somebody gets behind the Fort shield. And even then, I, I would say that it's not even a contest. There are so many team comps that have a Vanguard and then a healer for the, the one-two punch. And those combos win games. That's the reason they win games. Even when you, you look at high-level play, I guarantee you you're going to see 
you're going to see Fort Chemist, Jabali, Iris, and then, you know, one of the damage heroes. And I think that that's really telling. If you guys watch the 5v5 stream with, like, the other creators, I wasn't invited, but that's fine. Um, Atomic and Jordy and all those guys, they were playing, and you can see that they're all using certain heroes, and there's a reason why. So Chemist is absolutely a must-pick. Uh, you, I mean, you can't really argue with that. You have to have a healer. I mean, how else are you going to heal? You know what I mean? If you leave the point to get a heal pack, then the enemy can take the point, especially with a lot of these damage dealers you'll see here on this list later on. A lot of them are really good at taking damage. Now, I'm actually going to go out of order here and show you guys another controversial pick here. Jabali's only A tier. I don't think he's a must pick. And the reason why is that his shield is nice, but he now offers no damage capabilities. He can sit on the point and use his shield, and then once his shield is out, he's pretty much a sitting duck. He's going to get sniped by Osas. He's going to get pushed by Fort. You know, Fort can put his shield down and still fire through it and fire at the enemies and try to get kills and stuff like that. But in order for Jabali to do anything worthwhile, he has to take down his shield. And I just don't think that he's a must pick because of that. I also will say that's why I'm not going to slide him down into the lower tiers like B and C. Because if you have a Jabali, at least you do have that shield. And your teammates can kind of pick up your slack and stuff like that. Now, a lot of you are thinking, okay, so that means that all these damage heroes are going to be really low on the totem pole. And that is not true because I'll show you right now. I'm thinking I'm between A and S, honestly, because while I would say he's a must pick, I would say that you can also do good without him. So we're going to drop him in A. And if you guys want to change that, you know, A and S, it doesn't really matter. I personally would always like to have an Osos on my team out of all the other heroes on this list besides Fort and Chemist, and he does the most amount of damage. He can headshot a hero, and everyone on this list is dead except for Fort, Jabali, and Victor, and then they take two shots instead of one. So he can one-shot every other hero, including the healers, which is very, very important. So if you have a healer on the point and you're trying to take the point and maybe you use Mark's tactical and it shoots that torpedo at them, well, the chemist is just going to heal them up or she's going to stop you from healing and then you're toast. The Osas can pretty much kill them in one shot. He has a new ability that gives him the, the mobility that he is lacking his tactical can lock down the point. It can do damage to the pesky vanguards that are sitting on the point with their shields up, not doing anything. He is, I think he's a must pick. If you want to slide him down to A, that's totally fine with me. And again, let me know what you guys think of the tier list because I really want to know. If you guys are like, this is dumb, I don't want to watch this, then I won't do tier lists. And if you guys want the tier list, just drop a comment, drop a sub all that kind of stuff, and we'll do more tier lists for you guys because now that I've got it figured out how to do it, I think that it's definitely something I want to do with the channel. And again, Osos just has unparalleled damage. So you have unparalleled shields, unparalleled heals, and unparalleled damage. And I think that even just these three can carry you in a game of 5v5, even if your other teammates are aren't doing very good and the other team's doing really good, but they maybe don't have a fort or they don't have a chemist. I mean, the Osas jumps into the air, shoots the fort with a headshot twice. He's dead. And now you can take the point for free. So I definitely think he's S tier. If you want to drop him A tier, that's fine. And we're going to come in with something that might surprise you guys. It might not. I think Christina is in the A tier. Now, they gave her a new ability where she basically does the same thing as Osos, where she activates the ability and she jumps through the air. And that, for me, has always been 
the crux of Christina is that if you don't get the bounce right, you're not going to be able to dish out the amount of damage that a really good Christina player can. And that ability allows her to have the same mobility that Osos has, but also very, very good AOE damage. If you have a Christina and a Chemist and they are following a fort trying to take the point, they've pretty much got it. There's really no way to stop a Christina with another Vanguard hero if they're trying to take the point, except for Osos. And that's why Osos is up there, Christina's an A. I think that's a good spot for her. Her AoE damage is really good. You can basically use her second ability to position your ult right in the center of the control point or on the payload and wipe pretty much a whole team. At least two or three people are going to die if they step in that ultimate and they don't have a shield or a healer. So I think she's really good. I don't necessarily think she's a must pick because as you'll see in a little bit here, there's other damage heroes that are just a lot better when it comes to doing what they do. Now, now that I say that and I've got my, my three S tier heroes, we're going to make everybody super, super mad. And Skady is going in D tier. Now, she's a really good hero. Her ultimate, excuse me, not Skady, Mark. That's my bad. I meant to pick up Mark. I just clicked on the wrong person and started talking. But uh, Mark is going in D tier. He isn't as good as Skady, right? So his gun doesn't do as much damage. His ultimate is pretty much worthless. Like his ultimate doesn't do anything. What do you want to reveal people for when they're all on the point? I mean, that's really all I've got to say about it. Like Mark is pretty much trash. He does a decent amount of damage and he can get to the point faster. But, you know, he gets to the point a tiny bit faster than the Christina or the Osos. And they still kill him anyway because they do better damage than he does. Their ultimates are more viable to take the point to deal damage. And he's honestly outclassed by all the other heroes on this list. Aletta can dash just as much as he is on his board. Like at the same time, if you were to put him side by side, his board is just not fast enough. And it's really obvious when he's trying to flank, which is the only thing I would even use the board for is trying to flank around to the backside or something like that. And then you're, I mean, you're screwed. He doesn't do enough damage. His ultimate's worthless. His tactical's not very good. And I don't think that his gun and the board make up for it. I don't think that he's really useful. I mean, obviously, you can switch around all these heroes and they can be viable. They can all be B and A tier. But at the end of the day, if you are going to compare the heroes, he just doesn't deal enough damage for me to allow him to be in like the B or the A. I mean, you can you can kind of move him around, switch him into C. And again, D doesn't mean he's useless. And that's kind of the main point is he he's not useless, but if you compare him to all the other heroes, he just doesn't he doesn't measure up. You know what? Here. We'll move him to C because I do think he's good. And I think that there's only one hero that is worse than Mark, and that's going to be Victor. You guys are going to be like, oh my gosh, but a Vanguard can hold the point. And my answer to that is, where is his shield? He has no shield, and you are going into a battle with pretty much everybody except Yaw and Aletta are mid to long range heroes. You aren't going to need... Sorry about that. You're not going to need to have a victor on your team. He's super easy to kill. There's really, there's no way around it. He's just a target. His shotgun just is inconsistent. And his abilities don't really do the same things that they used to do. He doesn't even have a stun on his dash. And honestly, if you put a mark against a victor, the mark's probably going to win. So let me know what you guys think. Definitely let me know in the comments how wrong I am. I know I'm going to turn a lot of heads for that one.
but we're going to go right on to the next one. And I'm thinking we are going to bring Ya into A tier. And I know some of you might be like, oh, that's exactly where she needs to go. And some of you might be like, what, how is she more useful than Mark or Victor? And the answer is her ultimate can pretty much wipe an entire team. So she's already got a more useful ult than all three of our C and D tier heroes. And her gun is really good. Now, the main problem a lot of people run into is they use her tactical and maybe they get the kill, but there's nobody around because it's only 3v3. So chances are you're not going to be able to use her tactical again. And what's really nice is with Yaw, you can use her tactical pretty much over and over and over again because there's five people on the enemy team. More than likely, all of them are on the point because for some reason, people don't really like to pick Osas, but he's definitely a must pick in my opinion. And Yaw is also really, really good. I think she belongs in A tier. Um, the problem with Yaw in most people's eyes is even if you manage to use her tactical ability and maybe you get one kill, she does not have a lot of health. She doesn't have survivability. And I like that her new ability allows you to redirect the enemy fire back at them. So her ability puts up like a shield and it reflects the damage. And what the cool thing is, is they made it skill-based because it doesn't just reflect it automatically back to them. It actually is aimed. So if you are you have to be looking at them directly in order for it to reflect back at them. And I think that's really cool. And it's one of the reasons she is up in A tier because if you say you wait for like an Osas to use his ability or maybe you have like Mark use his... Um, tactical, you can just pop that yaw shield and reflect it right back at them. And it's like, even if you miss, what's it going to do? Like it's, it's free real estate because nobody's, nobody can damage you when you have that ability on. And it really adds to her survivability and her usefulness in the team. And I think that yaw is very, very underrated. And even though I'm not good with her, I can still pop off because there's five people for you to use your tactical on. There's five people for you to use your ultimate on. And even if you wipe two or three of them, that's still going to keep your team in the fight and on the point a lot more than it is like if you use a Letta and you, you know, you use your, your ult on them and it explodes. I just think like it's not as useful as a lot of these other characters. And you'll see that most teams will be a, a mix of these top three, and then you kind of just plug and play whichever one the team prefers. That's what's going to happen, and I think Yaw deserves the recognition of being in the 5v5 tier list in A tier. I think that's where she belongs. She's really good with her new tactical ability, her second ability. She doesn't really have too many weaknesses besides the fact that she still has a little bit less health than everybody. But I mean, you're looking at the fact that she can now reflect damage back at the user and no other hero has that ability. And then her ultimate's just awesome. You know what I mean? So that's where she goes. She's an A tier. Um, you might be able to move her down to B tier if you really are just hating on her. You know what I mean? Because she, she might not be as useful as you know, say Iris, who is also, get ready for this, she's going to be an A tier. Now, I know that a lot of people, you know what, I definitely think she's going to be a must pick. Now, you don't really see a lot of Irises, you see more chemists, but I think she's a must pick because she has a damage boost. When you use her second ability, it gives 25% damage to everybody that shoots whoever is marked. It's like it's like a mark is what it is. And you can honestly melt through pretty much anybody. If your team focuses on 
the enemies that she's marking. You know what? That's one of the things. We're going to bring her down to A. You can put her in must pick if you really want to. But the problem is she relies too much on her team. And that's really what's dropping her down right now. I just don't think I can justify putting her in the must pick when if your team doesn't shoot the people you mark, then you're screwed because she can only heal one person at a time with her tactical. Um, her gun, while it did get a buff, I'll grant you it's awesome now. I just don't think it does enough to her survivability. I don't think that you can 1v1 somebody the same way you could before. And her ultimate, it's really, really nice. And you can put it on the point, but I just don't think... I think she's dependent on her team, and that's why she's an A. If you say, well, oh, I have a really good team, then boom, move her into must pick. If you have the worst team ever, nobody's picking Vanguard heroes, nobody's picking Christina or whatever, then she goes down to B because she can't really do much on her own. She's reliant on her team. That's one of the weaknesses she has in the regular 3v3 mode, honestly. She has a really long reload time in 3v3, but they changed it in 5v5. She now reloads faster. So I just think that being dependent on your team makes it where you're not a must pick. Now, she is a healer. So you can say that, oh, she's a healer, so she automatically goes into the must pick. But you got to remember that most people queue into 5v5 solo. And who's going to queue solo and pick Iris? I mean, I will because I'm just the best, but most people won't pick Iris. And even if they do, they're not going to pick a Vanguard. They're going to pick one of these heroes down in the C and D tier because they're fun to play or whatever. You know what I mean? And if you want to win games and your team sucks, you're going to sit as Iris in the back. You know, maybe you heal one or two people and you just sit and wait for your ultimate to hopefully change the, the way the match is going and I think that you know so her ultimate is good right that's a must pick ultimate however her gun is not very good you still can't 1v1 a lot of these damage heroes her tactical ability both of them rely on teammates if you don't have anybody to heal her tactical is useless if you don't have people shooting when you mark somebody then her other tactical her second ability is again useless now you can do extra damage to whoever you're 1v1ing and you know maybe come out on top but i think that a tier is pretty fair especially considering how terrible the connections in 5v5 have been i mean i get kicked out of a match all the time you get bad teammates i just think that a hero who relies on a good team can't really be a must pick because you're always going to get that team that's not at the caliber you want them to be. And now we get into the most average hero, Skady. She's going in B tier. A lot of you guys probably think she should be an A. I can totally understand that, but I would rather have a Christina over a Skady because she just kind of does everything Skady does but better. Now, I will say she's now in my opinion, a flanker in 5v5. I don't think she's a damage hero because her new ability allows her to kind of jump away whichever direction you're, you're moving. So that is kind of the, a similar movement ability to Christina's, but it doesn't like put you in the air. It's just kind of like a flip in a direction. And it's really good. It's really awesome, but it's not busted. The hero's not busted. Her ultimate's really good, and you can wipe a lot of people with it, but if they see it coming, they're just going to dodge it. So she's kind of in that middle area, and that's where I think she loses it for me, honestly, is I can't put her in A tier because Christina's better and Yaw is better, and I'm not going to bring her down to C because she's definitely better than Aletta and Mark. So I think B tier is a fair spot for her. Definitely let me know what you guys think. That's probably the only hero I'm like not really sure on is Skatey because if you've got a good Skatey, she can web people to keep them off the point. She can use her new tactical ability to flank or get out of the way of people's ultimates and stuff like that. 
And her ultimate obviously is very good. Her gun is very good. She does have the um, the passive where if you land your shots, you land like I think it's three shots. Then the fourth shot is extra damage. So she's definitely good. I'll give you that. But I just think that overall she lands as your average good pick. You can't really go wrong picking Skady in 5v5. You're going to have a good time. And that's really all there is to it, you know. So this is kind of, this is the end of the tier list video for the most part. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, I'm going to go over them real quickly again, real quick. So best Vanguard, best Healer, best Damage. Those are your must picks. They're good at what they do, and they can keep the point, all three of them together on their own. Um, Iris is dependent on the team. So if you have a good team, she goes up. Bad team, she goes down. So if you want to put her in B tier because most of your teams all already suck, that's totally fine. Yaw is a lot better, and I think the amount of damage she's able to dish out and the flanks that she can pull off, she's just kind of a nuisance and a better one than Aletta. So that's why she's an A, because I think if you have a Yaw versus an Iris, I think the Yaw can do enough that you won't miss the Iris. And so obviously Jabali... He's another tank. He's A tier. You know, super simple one. That's an easy one. Christina's up there because she has the new mobility and she has AoE. So now she can do a lot more damage to people who are clustered around the point. And that's kind of the main thing with why all these other heroes are down low. Is Her AoE can happen whenever she wants with her abilities, her gun, and her ultimate. And Skady has to rely on her ultimate. Aletta has to rely on her ultimate. And Victor has to rely on his ultimate. So, you know, if you're an ultimate dependent hero, then you're just going to be lower. I think that Skady's kit all around is very good. Aletta is, she's too easy to kill. She doesn't, she doesn't do enough for me to put her above Yaw. And if you want to move Aletta to B tier, that's totally fine. I mean, she's interchangeable in, into the B tier you know, you can you can mess around, put her up, put her down. I think that she's definitely better than Mark. So, you know, you know, uh, top of C, bottom of B. I mean, there's only a few heroes. So Aletta is decent, but I just think you're going to get more bang for your buck if you choose the, the heroes in the S and the A tier. I think if you have a team that's got the heroes on the S and the A tier, you're going to win the game. If you have a team and it's Victor, Mark, Skady, Aletta, and one of the A tier heroes, you're going to lose because Chemist is too strong, Fort's too strong, Osas is too strong, and the support role that all these other heroes can give an A tier is just, it's just too good. Mark does not do anything. Again, like I said, he does have better damage than Victor, and the snowboard or surfboard or the hoverboard, whatever you guys want to call it, you know, that, uh, that back to the future hoverboard that he's got it lets him go around the map real fast and it lets him flank and that's why he's a barely barely above victor like he's not he's not going any higher than that if you if you pick mark over aletta then all like all it is is maybe you don't like aletta's play style because she doesn't have enough health or something like all these other heroes they do better damage than mark and then my boy victor He's just in a sorry state. The new tactical ability that where he spins the shotgun or whatever and it damage mitigates and all that, it's not really worth the effort. He's a vanguard without a shield. His gun is worse than it was before, still just as inconsistent. His ultimate is nice, but I don't think it's enough to make up for all the other flaws that he has as a hero. If the ultimate had a faster cooldown like half the time, He'd definitely go up, probably be like a B or an A. But you really just use him for his health. And at that point, you can use Chemist, Fort, or Jabali for health. You know, every role that he might fit in, all these heroes in the S and the A tier do it better. So that's just kind of an overview of my tier list and why I put these heroes there. Now, just remember, my tier list is, you know, this is just my opinion, you know. I'm not even very good with any of these heroes. I suck with Osas. 
I can't really play Yaw very well. So this is just my opinion from what I'm seeing. And I know I haven't really seen any other content creators make a tier list. So if they all come out with tier lists and you're like, what the heck, you know, Dronzer, your tier list is way different than everybody else's. You must be on something, you know, then let me know. Let me know in the comments. Drop a sub and tell me how terrible this tier list is because I really want to know if you guys like the tier list videos, even if you don't agree with where I placed all the heroes. It's always fun to see how another player thinks that all these heroes are rated. Like you might get somebody who's like, oh, sauce sucks and I'm putting him in D tier. And for me, that's why I like the heroes where they're at. So you guys have a good day. Peace out.